for the last 50 years, the entire world has been the beneficiaries of wood cutting. And we're to the point now where many of the Southeast Asian countries don't have a forest that they can cut anymore. In one human lifetime, we've lost about 60 to 70% of the natural terrain, the natural vegetation. It takes thousands of years for the diversity of a tropical forest to return. Where wild species are to be found, these in large part haven't been collected by uh, scientists yet. So we have to have now a new cycle and wave of doing inventories and surveys of what's left to make reasonable decisions. This can be done simply by linking people who have local knowledge of the plants with people who can publish and disseminate that important knowledge. So really, uh, for any conservation initiative to be successful, you have to serve the local needs such that they will appreciate and support the activities and the programs, the policies that you're going to recommend based on what you know about the native terrain. So my role is to link the scientific institutions to local communities that will collect the hard data. It's actually a very viable approach to things. It's inexpensive. But what the people here can do is make the hard data, that is the plant specimens, available quickly. A specimen made here, we can donate it to a facility in the developed world, a herbarium, and oftentimes they'll provide a name to bring those together, make that information available to governmental institutions that are going to make the decisions, where are the boundaries of the untouchable lands, where are the boundaries of the of the forest that will be managed, but how will we manage it? If you don't know what the plants are that constitute a plant community, you can't manage it reasonably. With values and human knowledge, we can sustain ourselves. We can't balance that. We will fail, really, to deliver what science pretends to guarantee, and that is human welfare and a better way of life.